In this video, we're going to take a look at the T1 flashlight from Thrunite. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to point out that this flashlight was sent to me by Thrunite for testing and review, and I did not pay for it. But I also want to point out that I'm receiving no compensation for th from Thrunite for making this video. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the tabletop in a moment where I'll go over the specifications for the flashlight, the function of the flashlight, and I'm going to be doing a comparison with another flashlight, which is the W1 flashlight from Thrunite. And the reason I'm doing that is because of, well, I was asked to do that by one of my viewers. And when Thrunite offered to send me the T1, I thought, great opportunity to compare the two. So that's what we're going to do. And of course, once we've done that, we'll get outside and we'll do some testing. All right, before we go over the specifications for the Thrunite T1 flashlight, I did want to show you what came with it when it was shipped to me by Thrunite. So it came in a small cardboard box. You know, it's just a simple little cardboard box. Less is more in this case. This one just seems to be a little nicer than some of the other boxes in that it had a bit of a foam a liner on the inside to keep it in position but uh, again it's just a simple box what more do you want it did come with an instruction manual written in multiple languages for all the sp performance specifications and modes of operation it came with a micro usb charging cable we'll talk more about that in a moment it did come with a lanyard which is also nice and of course all important not that i've lost them any yet but it's nice to have a pair of spare o-rings and a charging port cover to go with it okay so let's go over the specifications for the flashlight so to begin it is two inches and 11 sixteenths in overall length and that would be 69.5 millimeters it comes in at just under one inch it was hard to measure just under one inch in diameter at the basal which is 26.5 millimeters it comes in at just under three quarters of an inch across the body of the flashlight which would be 22 millimeters it weighs in at 2.5 ounces with the battery which is 72 grams it has a through night 1100 milliamp 18350 battery and as you can see, it does come with the two-way pocket clip, which is quite nice and allows you to put it on a hat or any other number of different things. It also has the magnetic ta tail cap, which has proven to be very useful in my use of the other flashlight, the W1 from Thrunight. So we'll go over the performance specifications. At its highest, on turbo, the flashlight will emit 1500 lumens that'll only last for three minutes of course before the heat protection circuitry shifts it down to 408 lumens and that will go on for another 52 minutes it has an infinity mode so it doesn't have the three steps of low medium high and i'll talk more about the infinity mode in a minute but on infinity high it will put out 685 lumens for 65 minutes on infinity low it'll drop down to 50 lumens for 35 hours and of course you can set it to anywhere in between infinity high and infinity low it does have a fire fire uh, firefly mode at 0.5 lumens lumens which will last for 12 days it does have a strobe which comes in at 550 lumens and it does not give the number of hours but i would suspect it is well over an hour and a half or so on on strobe it has a beam throw of 102 meters it has an impact resistance of 1.5 meters and it is ipx8 waterproof which means two meters submersion all right let's go over the modes of operation for the flashlight so it does have a single side button there is no tail cap button on this flashlight and it's just a simple on and off if you want to access the firefly from the off position hold the button down for about three seconds and it will go into firefly mode at 0.5 lumens turn it off now to turn it on and access the infinity modes turn the button the flashlight on hold your finger on the button you'll see it just indicated it was at high and now it's going all the way down to low it'll flash again three times to indicate that it's at its lowest setting hold your finger down it'll work its way back up all the way to high flash three times 
and you know you're at high. If I turn the flashlight off and turn it back on, it comes on at the same intensity it did before I turned it off. To access, access the turbo mode, I double tap, and I can do this from either uh, any position, any intensity, or with the flashlight turned on. So turbo mode, and that reaches the full 1500 lumens. Of course, that's only gonna last for three minutes. To access the strobe, I triple tap, one, two, three, it has a blue light in the uh, inside of the on off button that indicates when it is fully charged and when you're plugging the flashlight in that it light will turn red. If the flashlight gets below a certain percentage it will in, it'll start flashing red to tell you that it's time to recharge it. All right, let's bring in the W1 flashlight from through night to do a bit of a comparison. I'll go over what's similar between the fl two flashlights and I'll go over what's different about the two flashes, flashlights. And of course, I'm doing this at the request of one, a, a few of my viewers actually. So to begin with, I'm not gonna give you all the performance specifications that or the size and everything else that go with the W1 flashlight. I do have a comprehensive video on that that you can go back and look at if you're interested. I just want to give you some comparison between the two. So you can see that they are almost identical in size with the T1 being a tiny bit taller than the W1 on this side. The T1 is also a tiny bit heavier than the W1. The W1 comes in at just 52 grams as opposed to 72 grams for the T1. Of course, they're going to have different batteries, and as a result, they're going to have different uh, run times for the various intensities, and the T1 will be considerably brighter than the W1. So those are some of the comparisons. Now, they both have a two-way pocket clip. They both have single operation side buttons, and they both have magnetic tail caps. So they have those in common as well. Uh, there's not a lot else I can show you until we get outside and do some beam comparisons, and that's where some of the differences will really start to show up on the two flashlights. So one last thing before we get outside and do some testing is I just wanted to go over the charging of the T1 flashlight. So it does have a cover over a micro USB charging port. And I know a lot of people are looking towards the new USB-C type charging port, which would give you a faster charge time. But to be quite honest, I don't find this much of an issue. It charges up quick enough from a wall mount USB adapter or from a power bank. So it, it's not a, a handicap really. It would not be a deal breaker in purchasing the, this flashlight for me. You may see through night update some of their older flashlights like this one to a USB-C over time. But right now, again, I don't see that as much of a disadvantage. All right, let's get outside and do some testing with this flashlight. So for the first series of tests, we're gonna be working in my gear room in the basement of my house. So let's turn the through night T1 on low. So this is infinity low and I'll bring it up to infinity high. Uh, that is bright, very bright in this room. Let's see if I can put it on turbo. Brighter yet. Now I'll take it back down to infinity low. As the camera adapts, I can clearly see where I'm going in here. Okay, so let's just bring in the W1 by comparison. First, I'll turn off the T1. So this is the W1 on its lowest mode, and it only has the three modes, so we hold it down medium, high, bright, but not as bright as the T1. All right, there's the comparison in my basement. Let's go outside and see what it looks like. All right, we're starting the outside tests in my backyard using the T1 at its lowest setting, infinity low. Let's bring it up to infinity high. And you can see my bench in the backyard, some 25, 30 feet away, pretty brightly. Let's put it on turbo. Brighter again, of course. All right, back down to infinity low. Now, infinity low allows me to see what I'm doing right in front of me, but it's not giving me any distance, of course. Now, let's turn that off, bring the... W1, I think that's on high, so let's take it down to low. 
That's low with the W1, medium with the W1, and high with the W1, and turbo, there we go. All right, so turbo is considerably brighter. Now, there's one more test I want to do out in my backyard here, and that is a beam comparison. I'll do that against the side of my house. So I'm using Infinity High on the T1, and this is the side of my house, approximately 15 feet away. And what you can see is got a good flood beam. There's no real hot central. It seems to be a flood pretty much the whole beam. Now let's bring in the W1. Turn off the T1. Now with the W1, it's a very intense center beam with a flood ring around it. So there's two distinct uh, beams. You probably can't even see the outer flood, but the uh, tense, intense center beam is pretty good, but not near as bright as the W. One more time for the W or the T1. So obviously much brighter. And let's see what happens when I bring it up to turbo. And as the camera adjusts, uh, it doesn't quite reflect just how bright that is on the side of my house, but it is bright. All right, let's get out and do some testing in the woods. All right, this is our testing in the woods. And uh, I walked into where I'm at on Infinity Low. And I just want to show you, uh, Infinity Low is not giving you much of a view. But for me, I could see where I was going comfortably on this path. If I didn't have a path to go on, it would be a little bit more difficult. But let's bring it up to Infinity High. So there's Infinity High. I've got good depth of penetration, and I do like this wide flood beam. It gives me, you know, close to 180. I'd say 160 degrees of light ahead of me. Uh, no single hot spot, just a good wide flood beam. That's just quite great. Let's bring it up to turbo. Brighter doesn't show up as much on the camera as it does for me, but that's a long ways into the woods. I'll take it off, back on high. Let's take it down to infinity low again. All right, and again, you can't, probably can't see that now. Let's bring the W1 into action. So this is... All right, sorry, took a second. This is low, medium, and high. And it wasn't until we got to high that I actually started to be able to see any depth into the woods with this one. And for me, uh, when I'm looking at it now, I have that hot central spot and the cone of light or the flood around it. But even the flood around the outside of the central spot is not near as bright as it is with the T1. And I guess that's expected, two different flashlights. All right, and one more test, let's bring it up to turbo. Now, turbo really does start to penetrate into the woods here. It seems to be, just from a, a, per, a comparison, about as high as Infinity High is on the T1. But, of course, turbo was not sustainable for any length of time, so I'll take it back down to the high. All right, one last time. This is the T1 with Infin Infinity High. Lots of light. Lots of light. All right, let's wrap this video up. All right, some final closing thoughts on the T1 flashlight from Thrunight. So what do I like about the flashlight? Obviously the size. It is a small, compact size flashlight that will fit well in my pocket, especially with that two-way clip where I can have a deep carry in the pocket or mount it on my hat or a number of other places. Uh, I'd like the uh, runtime with the battery. It's a long runtime compared to some of the other flashlights of a similar size that I have. I'd like like the uh, uh, infinity modes, going from infinity low to infinity high, it allows me to get in between a low, medium, high and just set it where I want it and for the whatever I'm doing with it at that point. Um, I also like the flood. I really, really do appreciate the flood light on this flashlight compared to, well, the W1 as you saw in the testing. Um, what do I not like about this flashlight? Actually, very little. The one thing I could see being improved is the on-off switch. Um, 
it is operable. It doesn't, it's not a deal breaker by any means, but when compared with the T2, it has a much more tactile feel. It has a more definite on off clickiness, if that's the right way to describe it. And when the uh, flashlight is being charged or is run down and needs to be recharged, you can see the light more clearly on the T2. So that would be the only con that I can think of. Now, who is this flashlight for? Well, I think anybody who needs a small, compact EDC flashlight for around the city, around the home, or in the woods as a backup to a primary light, you could almost call this a primary light. I think if I had a headlamp and this, I think I'd be well served, but I think I'm probably going to carry it more as a backup light to something else when I'm out in the woods. I, I think it fits a perfect match. Now, let's compare it with the W1 from Night. So the W1 is a little bit smaller a little bit lighter and a little bit less expensive. However, it neither has the brightness nor the runtime of the T1. So I guess it's what you want. I would put the W1 as definitely EDC pocket carry little flashlight for around the home. Actually, this sits on my nightstand next to my bed for when I need to get up and don't have the lights or power failure or whatever it is until I find a bigger light. Uh, this is probably the better choice for that. Now, people have asked me, what about a work as a work light if you're in confined spaces? Either one. Depends on what you need. Most people will not run out of runtime with the small W1 before they get an opportunity to recharge it. But if you want to be sure, go with the longer run times of the T1. The only thing I'd say in comparison between the two is I prefer the floodlight of the T1 over the central hotspot and peripheral floodlight of the W1. But that's up to you. It depends on what you're looking for in a flashlight. This will give an intense central beam, more so than the T1 will, but this gives a much better floodlight. Okay, so there's the comparison between the two. I think you would be well served with either one of these for EDC. Spend a little bit more, get more runtime, get a little bit extra weight, that's true, but get a much better flashlight in terms of intensity, runtime and operational features. Okay, that's all I have for you on the Thrunight T1 rechargeable flashlight. If you have any questions or any comments regarding this or any of the other flashlights that I've reviewed, please put them in the comments section below. Because as I mentioned, the reason I accepted the T1, and I'm glad I did, from Thrunight was because of comments from viewers like yourself. So those comments do influence the type of things that I'll be reviewing in the future. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Get out and explore. Take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.